So today on Shadows in the Forest, we're going to make a double quill fishing float to go along with our coarse fishing gear from the 18th century. I got my cane pole, I got my haymakers, now I'm on my way down to the fishing hole. we're going to make a double quill fishing float. But before we actually do that, we're going to take a look at two natural ways that we can actually fashion bobbers to our line for our 18th century fishing gear, our coarse gear. So the first place that you could stop to actually get a, a natural float that isn't going to cost you anything, it doesn't really take a lot of manufacture either, find an old tree that's been punked out. You know, anything that is dry, punky material will actually work for a float. So, we'll take this down to the stream, we'll test that there. And there you go. Punkwood works, so it's really not such a bad float, especially when you can grab it and go with it. Well, the punkwood worked out pretty good as far as using that as a bobber or a float, right? The second way is this. This is a wasp gall. And if you're not familiar with them, what this is, is actually a wasp lays their larva in here. And they grow, they mature, and then they fly out. So that's a wasp gall. Now, where would you find something like this? I thought you might ask that. Well, here's where you're going to find it. Usually the best place to find a wasp gall is in goldenrod. So if you can find large, large stands of goldenrod, you know, big bunches of it, that's your best place. So take a look around. Maybe we can actually find one today. There's another one here. So as you can see, if you look with a little perseverance, you should be able to find one, maybe two. And then you'll have them, put them in your kit. It's a primitive fishing bobber, but it does work. Okay? Enough with the natural replacements. Let's go right on into the double quill float. Come on. All right, so what we're going to do now is we're going to actually put together the double quill float, uh, much like this one here. And this is one that I put together for when I was down at Prickett's Fort. So I'm going to go over the materials that we need to make these floats for your coarse fishing gear. You're going to need two feathers, and both of them, one's going to be larger than the other. And as you can see right here, I've already taken the quills off. I've already cut them. And that's important because one is going to fit into you the You can other. get these in any sewing shop, or you can use just very thin brass wire. Um, the safety pins here, we're going to cut them, and that's going to be your loop for the attachment of your line. Okay, you're going to need some type of binding material. Now, what I've elected to use is artificial sinew to actually help it float. But you can use regular sinew, you can use black thread, uh, linen thread would be preferable, um, or silk thread. So we have a couple of feet of that as well. Uh, you're going to need some type of wax material. Um, this is nothing more than simply um, tallow and beeswax that's going to be mixed together. Um, it's quite popular. It's out there. That's really all that it is. We're going to use this to help seal the joint as well as keep the uh, thread in place while our float is put together. If you want to go a little bit more modern, you have this is what's known as um, dubbing wax. And you can get this for when you're tying flies. It also helps when you are 
making these floats because basically it just helps keep the thread in place the same as your uh, beeswax and tallow right here. We're going to want some type of adhesive. Um, yes, being a reenactor, we, we could use um, basically pine pitch uh, or a natural um, type of glue. You know, for this, we want to keep our gear and we want it to last a little bit longer. So, yes, I elect to use a modern um, glue. Uh, I can use less of it, and uh, I know that my floats will last a little bit longer. So, choice is up to you whether you want to use modern adhesives to create the illusion or use regular um, 18th century technology to make these, which primarily 90% of this will be. So. So what we did is we actually went ahead and we cut our quills from our feathers, all right? They were attached here, we cut them off, and we have two different sizes. Now where that comes into play again is because we have to feed one half into the other side, okay? Much like on this float, and again, the same as on that float. And as you can see, this is wound here. Now, this is where our wax comes into play. What we want to do is we want to take our wax and we want to wax around the quill here. We want to take our cordage. And what we want to do is we want to start to wrap this. And we want to wrap it until this just tucks in and seats in. Just like that. So now it holds it into place. And then what we'll do is we'll continue to take some more wax. And we're going to wax this up. Now we're going to seal this by creating another wrap going down onto the other quill, as you can see. That's our top joint. Now what we can do, is if we want to, is we can take our adhesive, our glue, and we would go all the way around that. And then we would just let it dry. So, we can go ahead and we can do that. Take a little bit of glue, put it on. What I do is I just go ahead and I just wrap it around it and seal all the threads. We'll let it dry. While we're letting that dry, we want to create a loop. And very simply, what we do is we take our safety pin and we're going to wind up cutting this. And we're going to have our loop, as you can see here on this one as well. This is just an easy way of doing it. You can use brass wire, it's not a problem.
So we'll take this. We'll cut that off. And here we have our loop and it's pre-made. Okay. So now we're going to work our way down the float. And we're going to take our loop and we're going to put it here and we are going to wrap the loop onto the quill like so. So now that I have this in place what I like to do is I like to actually just put a little bit of adhesive just to hold it in place just to help Now we're just going to continue to wrap our loop in place. Add some more glue. Get our final wrap in, twist it all the way around, and then what you can do is you can run that glue all the way up the float. Now we have a double quill float. Okay, so now we have our float and our float is made. Let the glue dry and then what you can do is you can run over it again with wax. You can run over it with shellac or you could use um, pine pitch or things of that nature um, and it'll be ready to go. Let it set up for a day. You don't have to go out and use it right away. I, use, I realize that I use super glue um, but it still gives us a very very good copy of something that would be used in the 18th century. You take a look at this commercial float here that they sell for historical fishing. I doubt that they had fluorescent orange paint. So uh, if we want to, you know, again if we want to start to nitpick on these little things of that nature, um, I think it detracts more than what we learned. So that is how you make a double quill fishing float in the 18th century. So this is Brian from Snowwalker Bushcraft. Thank you for using your comments. And until the next one, walk the woods.